what are we looking at now? Yeah, it's the Earth again. Those of you who recognize it, well done. What we're looking at here is the continent of Europe. And south of Europe, we have Africa. East of Europe, we have all of Asia. Across the Atlantic Ocean, we can just see North America. But today, I wanted to zoom in on Europe. I hope you recognize that little island up there. That's us. Hello, us. Hi. There is Great Britain just beside us, just across the channel. We have France. And if we traveled all the way south, down through France, across over the mountains here on the border, we would arrive into this country here. And this country is called Spain. You probably guessed already. So you can already see some of the information that you might want to include in your projects this week on the map here now i'm using google earth which is an app that you can download or a program but you could probably also use google maps so if you google google maps you'll find it pretty handy and straight away we can see the capital city of uh, spain being named there the seas around spain have been named and the countries that border spain also we can see them so and you can see the names of some of the mountains in the country here you can also see that quite a lot of spain isn't quite as green as ireland and you can wonder about that. It's quite green up here in the north as it runs into the north of Portugal. But as you move down through the centre of the country, it's not as green at all. And down in the south, it doesn't look terribly green either. I wonder why that might be. Okay, so that's some of the basic physical geography and the political geography of Spain. Physical geography is what's there before humans ever came and will be there long after humans leave. And political geography is the geography we create ourselves. Things like borders and the names of cities and things like that. All right. Now we're going to go over to this little slideshow here. I just have a quick look through it. And I want you to pay attention. You can watch this video as much or as many times as you want and pause it and take notes. Because I will be asking you to note down different facts as we go. So where is Spain? Well, we've already dealt with that ourselves, haven't we? We know that it's in the south. Would that be the north, south, east, east and west? That would be the southwest of Europe, isn't it? And we see here, Spain is a large country in Europe and shares borders with France and Portugal. It has the Mediterranean Sea on its east coast. That's the Mediterranean here. And the Atlantic Ocean on its north, west and south coast. Now, then we skip on to our facts about Spain. You can see here they've left Portugal out and they've included all these islands here. Now, these are the Canary Islands, which aren't there at all. They're actually way down south in the Atlantic off the coast of Africa. But they belong to Spain, so they've included them in this map here. And they've included all the different regions of Spain here. Spain is officially called the Kingdom of Spain. That's because, unlike Ireland, which is a republic, we have a president. They have a king. They're similar to the United Kingdom just beside us here. The capital city of Spain is Madrid. I think we all knew that already. The official language is Spanish. That's the official language for the whole country. The population of Spain is approximately 47 million people. I saw 49 million somewhere the other day as well, so that might be more up to date. So that is about 10 times more than we have in the Republic of Ireland. Spain has very hot weather in the spring and summer, making it a popular holiday destination, especially with people from the UK and, of course, Ireland. In winter, temperatures in some parts of Spain can get cold, sometimes below zero degrees, and it can snow. I know they had heavy snow, which is unusual enough, in Madrid just a few weeks ago. And there, Madrid is marked just right smack bang in the centre of the country. Then there's something about the Spanish royal family. No, I don't really care about them. Spanish food. If you want to do something about the Spanish royal family, off you go. I'm more interested in the food. Now, we see some lovely oranges and fish and ham there. Mmm. La comida de España. Off we go. The Spanish eat a mainly Mediterranean diet, which consists of fresh fruit and vegetables, a variety of seafood, Cured ham and meat, and due to its proximity, that means it being close to, due to its proximity to the Mediterranean Sea and Atlantic Ocean and its sunny climate, 
Spanish foods tend to be fresh, colourful and very healthy. There are many traditional and varied Spanish dishes from different areas of the country, all influenced by the local environment and surroundings. So if you went to one part of Spain, you might get totally different food to what you might get at the other end of the country. They eat very different types of local dishes in different parts of Spain. Spanish food, when we look at the fruits and vegetables first, they're very lucky in Spain that they can grow lots and lots of fresh fruit, unlike us in Ireland. It's a little bit too cold and rainy here for lots and lots of different types of fruit. So different parts of Spain are famous for growing and producing different types of food. In the very hot and sunny south of Spain, there are large areas of woodland and orchards, and many fruits and vegetables flourish there. In fact, they are so delicious that they are exported to countries all over the world, including here. We get a lot of Spanish fruit in Ireland. Olive oil is another popular food source produced in the south of Spain. Spanish food. Now, mm, 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 one of my favourites is paella and other seafoods from Spain. You can see a lovely big paella pan there bubbling away with the rice and the clams and the prawns in it. I made a paella recently with mussels and prawns. It was delicious. A very popular dish in Spain is paella, which originated in the city of Valencia in the, on the east coast of Spain. This is traditionally cooked in a large pan. Common ingredients in paella are rice, Spaniards cook with bomba rice, saffron, seafood and chicken. Cod and tuna are the most commonly eaten fish in Spain. Some of the best fish is sourced off the north coast of Spain in areas such as Galicia, Asturias and Cantabria. And then we have Spanish food chorizo and cocido. Chorizo, mm, chorizo is a Spanish sausage made from coarsely chopped pork and pork fat and seasoned with smoked paprika, which gives it its reddish hue. Chorizo can be either picante, which means spicy, or dulce, which means sweet. Another popular Spanish speciality is a dish called cocido. This is a chickpea-based stew, which is made with meat and vegetables. And you can see it there in the picture. And then we have pan con tomate. Pan is bread and tomate, you can probably guess. Pan con tomate in English literally means bread with tomatoes, which describes exactly what this dish is. Pan con tomate is a staple part of the Catalonian diet, but is, and Catalonia is the area around Barcelona, but is eaten regularly in most other areas of Spain. It can be eaten on its own as a snack or as an accompaniment to a meal at breakfast, lunch or dinner. Catalonia is a northeastern region of Spain um, and in a lot of people in Catalonia would consider it to be their own independent homeland. Um, but the vibrant city of Barcelona is in Catalonia and they have their own language in Catalonia as well, Catalan. Spanish food, then we're getting on to the sweeties. This is the churro. A churro is a dough pastry that is deep fried to give it a crunchy outer layer. Spaniards eat churros. They may eat churros for breakfast. Churros may also be dipped in chocolate sauce. Do you fancy trying one? Oh, I'd love one right now. <laughs> and then we look at Spanish schools. The Spanish education system is divided into five levels. Preschool, from zero to three, which is like Ireland. Early childhood education, three to six. That'd be like our Ninra, our preschool. And primary school, which is six to 12, which is nearly the same as ours. Then they have compulsory secondary for 12 to 16 and post compulsory sec secondary education, which is 16 to 18. So you have to stay in school compulsory until you're 16 and then you can stay in secondary until you're 18. So it's very similar to our school system as well with pre-primary, primary and post-primary. Spanish children go to school for three terms of roughly 11 weeks. And although they do not have as many half term holidays as here in the UK. Now, where do you think this uh, presentation was made. It was made in the UK. They don't have as many midterm breaks as Ireland. They have a longer summer holiday and lots of days off for festivals and non-teaching days. Some schools sometimes have a long two or three hour break in the middle of the day, during which many children go home for lunch with their families. And this is the Plaza de España. I wonder where that might be. The Plaza de España, which is in the city of Sevilla, is a popular tourist site in Spain. Quite literally, in English, it means Spain Square. It's an impressive semicircular brick building with tall towers on each side. I wonder, would you be able to find out where Sevilla is? The Alhambra. The Alhambra is a palace and fortress in Granada. 
The building was converted into a palace in 1333, so almost 700 years ago, by Yusuf I, Sultan of Granada, but has served many different purposes during Spain's history. The walls of the buildings have a reddish tint after being baked for years in the sun. Granada, I wonder where that might be. What part of Spain? Could you find it, I wonder? And then the Sagrada Familia. One of the most famous buildings in Spain is the unique Sagrada Familia. It is a large Roman Catholic church in Barcelona and was designed by Antony Gaudi. However, despite building work starting in 1882, so nearly 130 years, 140 years ago nearly, the building is still unfinished. Gaudi worked in the building for 40 years, but sadly died in 1926 before it was completed. Since then, several builders and architects have taken over, but it is still incomplete. It's not finished. It is hoped the construction will be finished in 2026, in five years, which will mark the centenary of Gaudi's death. Flamenco dancing. An important part of Spanish culture is flamenco dancing. It started in Andalusia in Spain, but it is now popular all over the world. Flamenco dancing is famous for its heel stamps, hand claps and castanets. Originally, flamenco had no music and the dance was accompanied by singing and hand clapping alone, known as toque de palmas. And if you want to watch some flamenco dancing, I would very much recommend you look up a video online. It's an absolutely beautiful art form. And that is the end of the little presentation on Spain today. Now, that is probably enough information for you to be working with today, but I will be moving on to show you these websites and if you want to have a quick look at them feel free to do this is kids world travel guide and they have interesting facts for kids on spain so that's the kids world travel guide.com kids hyphen world hyphen travel hyphen guide.com and there is a lot there and there's also national geographic kids and their facts on spain and if you just google national geographic kids spain you'll get all of this information on spain here I will be going through these two websites in more detail with you tomorrow. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.